Hello, Questonians. Today I wanted to talk to you about the review. Um, this is the answer key, but I want to talk through the problems. So if you're getting something wrong, um, it's another opportunity to learn before the summative, which is on Thursday. So as we've talked about many times already, the independent variable is always the x. It's always the first column and the horizontal axis. The dependent variable is always the y, the second column, and your vertical axis. I suggest you highlight your notes so you remember this. So we have our dependent variable and our independent variable. To fill out the table if you're just given the equation, one way to do it is plugging in numbers. So if you have your x is right here, if you think or if you are being told that x is 0 and you want to find out what y is, you plug in 0 0.5 times 0 plus 1. That gives us our 1. Or you can think about it like we started with 1 and we went up 50 cents for whatever. Or we started with one cookie and we ate another half a cookie every hour or whatever. So every time we're going up that 50 cents, which is right here. I also want to talk about what if there isn't anything in front of the variable? This is a huge hint to you. So what if it is something like y equals x plus 10? If there isn't anything in front, hopefully you remember this means a 1. So if we had x plus 10, when x is 0, that would be 0 plus 10, which would be 10. So y would be 10 when x is 0. If x was a 1, so I'm writing this down here, when x is a 1, y would be 11 because 1 plus 10 is 11, etc., etc. And then again, don't forget to graph your x on the horizontal axis, your y on the vertical axis. So here are your ordered pairs. So over first and then up and down. And I know this is pretty marked up, but hopefully you're adding notes um, to your notes. You can't use your review, but hopefully you're adding to your notes. All right, so for this one, we have to figure out our dependent and our independent. Well here, if he is collecting baseball cards and he collects five each week, that means the total amount he has depends on the weeks. So our weeks will go in our first column. That's always the independent variable. Notice I didn't just put a W. I'm putting number of weeks. I'm saying what it means. And that is going to be on your x-axis. Number one mistake I saw on the formative is people flipping the x and the y axis. So you're putting your independent on the y. That's the dependent. So again, color code. Your dependent, the total amount of cards depended on the week. So many of you had the table right, but you switched your axes. Another major mistake I saw was not labeling. You have to tell me what those numbers mean. So be really careful with that. All right, for this one, the Butler Bookstore is selling pens for $1.50 each. That means every pen you buy is $1.50. So that means our total cost is going to depend on the number of pens. So the number of pens is P, the total cost is T. Total cost depends on the number of pens we purchased. So if I'm going to color coat, oh no, our dependent is that first column. The total cost depends on the number of pens, and that's your x-axis, number of pens. Notice I labeled your dependent, the total cost depends on the number of pens. 
it's right here. It's what we're solving for, and it is your y-axis. Please take some notes on that. That's so important that you understand which is the independent and dependent. That's the main purpose of this part of the unit. And then we numbered our axes, we plotted our points, and we're done with that problem. The very last problem is the advanced, so I'm not as concerned about that. this one. Again, remember your independent variable is this one, and your dependent is this one. So your independent is here, and your dependent is here. So I didn't write the story problem yet, so I don't have my labels, but you should have labels telling me what these numbers mean. The other part of this, or the other piece of the puzzle, is remember that your what you begin with, so right here, what you're beginning with is not what y is when x is 1, but what y is when you are just starting out, when it is 0. So week 0, or in the beginning, um, what you if you're saving money, what you started with at the beginning. So it could be that, yes, after one week you had 25, after one week you had $25, but how much did you start with? So to figure this out, you have to find your pattern. Whoa. You have to find your pattern. So we know we're going up 15. But then you have to work backwards. So if it, after week one we already had $25, what did we have when we started? And that's where this 10 comes in. So then you have to decide what your context is going to be. It could be you started with $10 in your piggy bank and you saved $15 every week. It could be that your starting salary is $10 to babysit and you make $15 every hour, um, whichever. But then after that is when you have to decide your labels and write the word problem. Remember the question. If I started with ten dollars up front and I made fifteen dollars per hour how long would it or how much would I make after ten hours something like that don't forget the question and then I really hope you all are listening and not just watching because you're missing so much and then to write the equation remember your rate is the per or the each or how much it's going up by and this part after is how much you started with. So in this case, we're going up 15 for every whatever, every week, but we started with $10. So on your y-axis, you would start here, and then you go up 15 for every one. I hope that helps, and I really hope you are listening and not just watching what I wrote. Um, hope, good luck, and peace out.